<laughs> when we're making films, we try to uh, keep the energy alive on set, and we always we treat everyone like every position on set is just as important as our position, and we we're all artists coming together to make one piece of art. And so we try to keep the energy alive on set and that you can see that energy and heart into, into our films. And so I think that's kind of how, I don't know, like we keep things very open on set as well too. Any, any ideas from the crew, cast, we're totally open to it and we love the input. And so we would always be uh, embracing input from our crew and, and, and putting it into the film because I think, uh, you know, we have... 30 artists on set and they're just as important their position is just as important as mine and I just feed off that energy and that creativity and I love working in the moment and I think that really shows in the in our work and so I don't know I guess that's probably how we keep that energy alive and also you know I we're I'm a product of uh growing up in the 80s and and being subjected to high concept ideas and and uh, like shows like uh, you know growing up with shows like Ghostbusters, Teenage, Mut Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Transformers, Mask, Thundercats. Those are all crazy high energy ideas, and that's just what has fueled my imagination and has made me who I am today. And and that's those are the kind of stories I like to tell. I love high concept ideas, and uh, there's a lot of energy behind those things. So, how important was the um, the collaboration with Kareem? Because uh, his work in the film, I I really love, and I love the palette of the movie. And uh, it's it's unusually rich for a film shot like this. Mm -hmm. um, well, Kareem is he's one of us, and I met Kareem when we showed uh, Trevenge at Fantasia, and he had worked with uh, my producer Rob Cotterell. They made uh, Rob worked on his first film, which was Subconscious Cruelty. Sure. And uh, Rob introduced me to him, and we were just like. I don't know, I feel like we're kind of like the same person. We have the same uh, influences and the same imagination. And he came up to uh, to work on the film. He came and lived at Rob's house for three months before going into production. And we didn't even know if we were really making the film at the time. He just wanted to come and be supportive and help us get the film off the ground. And he's been experienced, like he's done, he's directed a couple films himself. Mm -hmm. And he was just so giving to me. And uh, if I was ever losing confidence, he is 100% confident in himself, and I admire that. I admire people who have a lot of confidence, and I feed off that. And I think, I think the, one of the most important things filmmakers can be is be, to be confident, and that's Kareem. And uh, he just came on and just rocked it for us. And he, we have the same influences. We're very inspired by Italian cinema, and uh, we just we wanted to make a, uh, an action uh, exploitation movie that um, just kind of fit into that world. Uh, I didn't want to make a film that was a wink at Grindhouse or exploitation film. Instead, we just wanted to make one of those films. I think that's a significant difference, and it's the thing that for me sells this and makes this genuine and, and that I respond to is that there's no, especially in your performance, there's no wink. You, you aren't kidding. I, I really, I love the business that you want to start and I love how driven he is just to get his lawnmower and I don't laugh at it because right. I really feel like you're invested and I believe that that is the most important thing to your guy is right. that freedom that thing that it is I think by not winking I can take all the craziness around right. it more seriously and have more fun with it in a way yeah absolutely like uh, I think one of my favorite movies uh, moments in the film is when he's uh, writing on the cardboard uh, he writes uh he needs money for his five-year-old son who lost his leg, which right. was a lie. Right. It wasn't right. true to himself. Right. And then he throws it away and he writes, I'm tired, which is true. It's like right. it's, he's tired of where he is in his life and he wants a change. And uh, that was very important to us and to keep that main character grounded and let the zoo around him be crazy. And I think that's what makes the film uh, strong, I guess. <laughs> And then, and your approach to that, as you as you sort of dug into the material and, and looked at that that wild world Jason was building around you, then how do you find that center? Well, that that was, of course, that was sort of the battle, basically, that we all really wanted to see happen, and uh, get get that sort of more. I I sort of took it as, in a way, that the moment he leaves any, you know. He, he he gets up in the world in the world he is and it it sort of turns him into an animal, and he doesn't want that. 
but it's just like a response to it because it makes him angry and he can't cope with it. And then when he gets inside, he is a slightly different person and not performing this crazy, you know, not cooperating with or responding to this craziness. And then he's just along with his own limited sort of, you know, ideas because he does, you know, he's a very simple guy. I mean, he's lost it somewhere, I don't know. And he hangs on to like a couple of feathers for his new life. And yeah, that's very romantic, but it's also, you know, it's pathetic and, and, and yeah, a little bit strong. But we had, the, in the storyline, the storyline is really, you know, just a couple of strokes and very simple. Uh, uh, and there's, a, I think there's a really nice uh, tormented scream in there about, you know, about the real life of, you know, where nobody gives a shit. Yeah. Here, everybody is an asshole and, and don't, but, yeah, we're, like, not that far away. <laughs> there, there is something experiential about about the way it marginalizes your character at the beginning to a point where there's a break, where there's the only response, really, is what you end up doing in the film. Yeah, it's a tough one. That, that was a tough one for me. And I think, uh, I mean, there's nothing more moving to me, and, and uh, it makes me almost, you know, I can cry when I see it. I mean, in The Hitcher, there's a scene where the kid in the hitcher gets this gun and he's now trying to figure out how to use it and the clumsiness that clumsy is such a clumsy moment and i felt there was sort of a, a similar moment here where he, he has to fucking trade his walking stick because he's got a shit leg and uh, and he needs his hands but he, he's going to trade it in his walking stick and his dream for a shotgun and hoping that that would bring you know Peace, and as we know, you know, shotguns don't fucking bring peace. They create, you know, madness, more <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah, the acceleration so, is part of what's really exciting yeah. in the film. Yeah, and one of the things that was important too is that uh, there's that story the hobo gives about bears to to the prostitute Abby in the bedroom scene, and uh, he gives like a great analogy about how um, bears like to be alone and they don't like anyone stepping inside their circle, and when they do, they could become a man killer, and uh, that was very important. And that all came that all came from Dave Brunt, the guy, the original hobo in the trailer. He, that he's obsessed and so inspired by grizzly bears. And that mm. conversation that uh, the hobo has with Abby is actually word for word a conversation that I had with Dave Brunt uh, over breakfast. I just recorded it on my phone, and I realized like he's like when you go to his house, he just has stacks of books on grizzly bears, and it's he's been so he's thrown himself so deep into and into how bears live that it's kind of crossed over into how he lives as well too and so that was i don't know i, I that was one of the more fascinating yeah. things that i wanted to bring to that character well my last question is a movie like this kind of lends itself to being um you can have fun with the promotion of it you can have fun with how you're releasing it and sort of how you reach that audience initially mm -hmm. um you've had such a great response up here and it's been so much fun to listen to people on on buses and things and when you say the title, watching somebody's face if they haven't heard it yet. Everybody likes it. It's, it's immediate. <laughs> Everybody wants to see it. It's really funny. So, yeah. so have you guys started talking about how uh, what you're going to do right before you actually hit the theatrical circuit? And are you going to have more fun with it and sort of play with your audience? I'm not too sure. We're just kind of... Uh, we, we just finished the movie like a week before coming here. And so we're, we've gotten here and we're dealing with Sundance and all the press and then the, I think as soon as we get back home we'll start figuring those things out but it, the film's going to come yeah. up pretty soon so we've got to get on it I think because it is the real Grindhouse experience I just hope you can extend that out to the beginning of that experience as they walk in mm -hmm. um, I, I really I enjoy the work so much sir. Uh, thank you I you know no I was thinking you know there's the there's something about you know who I am and, and, and in, in my work it's that these films, I've got two films out now in Sundance, which is probably doesn't happen much. And they're out of competition. That's, I like that. Uh, but the thing is, these two directors which, um, with whom I clicked with like immediately uh, and who are both here, they ask you to, to, to be like a face uh, of their dream. And then you come in and you do the work and you do the best you can. And I think, you know, in many ways, I think it's so simple you know, the, the, that's just, you know, that's just, that's just part of the work. And I get so much credit from them and from an audience, but I have more respect for what they do because they, they have to 
you milk this thing for a year, for a year, two years, three years, <laughs> and there's so much work. So I think it's almost unfair to to take to give me so much credit. <laughs> I, you know, I, I yeah, you know, the director of Mill and the Cross. I did three days of work, and I, they were very important for me, and I discovered many things. But at this, and then at the same time, he says, "Rutger, you are the movie," and he's worked on this for uh, forever. And it's about art and Bruegel and painting and, you know, almost a, 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 it is almost a video game, a, a, a classy video game almost, that film. And this is a graffiti film. It's just, you know, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think, you know, I, I, you may disagree with me, but I, I, f I really feel that. I'm just, such, I'm just such a small part in the whole thing. I think I think over the course of your career, you've really worked with filmmakers who it seems like you you have handed yourself to them and been rewarded for that trust because you've you've been fortunate enough to yeah, work with guys. Yeah, many who... times, many times. Sometimes they really fuck me over, and I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, that how you it's know. True, but... I did two films. One was fucked over by because the money just fell out, and the director uh, uh, Maureda was a wonderful, interesting director. Uh, and then the other director was just fucked because he was a first-time director, and there were like five big egos on the movie who all wanted to direct the movie. No, and in the end, in the end, it was just you know, ego, you know, ego and creative force don't go together. You have to get the ego out of the out of the door. And I know that's easier said than done, but once you get into the creative creative nerve or bloodstream, then everything is starting to flow. It happens. So. Um, I think it was definitely the case here. Yeah, we were very yeah. lucky. We had a lot of freedom. <laughs> well, Dylan, thank you for taking the time today. And Don't I... be afraid. Yeah. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid. It, that's, that comes through loud and clear in this. Yeah. No fear. <laughs> no fear.